Thank you, team at Nigeria Health Watch, Chikwe. Um, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, it's a little bit intimidating, actually, being on the stage with uh, some of the people around here, given that I've only been in the country for less than a year. Um, I think what might be useful is for me to describe uh, some of what I encountered when I first started coming back to Nigeria, um, how we decided to approach it, and then what our particular vision is moving forward and how we, we see the future of healthcare. Um, as I mentioned, um, I started coming back to Nigeria about five years ago. Um, and uh, from then as an observer to now, in my role as somebody who is uh, implementing some interventions, there was one underlying theme that caused uh, quite a lot of frustration uh, to me. And that was the fragmented nature of the entire healthcare system. Um, I felt that it just didn't make uh, much sense um, in, my, in my mind. Um, can we go to the first slide, please? Yeah. So that's, that's essentially how I felt um, when, I first, when I first came into the system. Um, because um, I examined the, the public sector. Um, there seemed to be a mismatch between what was going on there. On one hand, um, you had the uh, federal government acknowledging the fact that uh, we lacked the human resources to adequately provide the care that we needed. And they were actively prioritizing interventions for this. Yet, on the state level, as we've heard, today several times, what I found on the ground time and time again was that money was being spent building healthcare facilities that more often than not would never be used. And that continues to happen today. I'm glad to hear that um, the NPHCDA is definitely not, not for um, any of these kinds of interventions. Um, on the private side, uh, what I found was that there were a multitude of independent physicians, independent hospitals, uh, healers, quacks, as somebody mentioned, who were all working in, in these silos um, in a system where there was no agreed upon standard of care that was supposed to be delivered. And in many cases, there wasn't even a delineation about the service level of care that was being provided. I, I am yet to wrap my head around the effectiveness of a two-bedded hospital, but you find them everywhere. Um, when you go here. Um, on the healthcare financing end, I think we are all um, assured that health insurance is here to stay. It's the way of the future. But even within that space, there's no consensus on what it costs to deliver care, right? Um, if I asked a question about how much it costs to treat malaria, I would get a different answer from the audience members depending on who you are. If you're a healthcare professional, you have one idea. If you're in the private sector, you have an idea. Public sector, you have an idea, et cetera, and it goes on like that. Um, and I think so essentially what I found was that there was fragmentation in the way that healthcare was being regulated, there was fragmentation in the way that healthcare was being financed, and there was fragmentation in the way that healthcare was being delivered. Um, and, and what it reminded me of was uh, the banking sector, you know, prior to the reforms of like 2008, where you had this very unstructured and highly unregulated system. And in those times, what um, it, was it was estimated that Nigeria lost $400 billion to the poorest nature of that fragmented system. But what we have now in the banking sector is something that is a bit more structured. It's highly regulated. Corporate governance is very strong. Standards have improved across the board. Um, if you go to any branch of the bank that you bank with, you are pretty much assured of a, a standard of care um, with very little variation um, across that. And if you look at the sector, they haven't done too badly, right? Since 2008 till now, they've managed to increase the number of um, people with bank accounts from 18 million to more than 70 million. Why did this happen, right? Uh, and this happened because at a very high level, people realized that this fragmented system was going to be to the detriment of the country as a whole. Uh, and I think that healthcare um, is, is no different and we need to also be be taking a systems approach, which is something um, that Dr. Troika said. We need to take a systems approach to the way that we approach uh, uh, healthcare. Um, next slide, please. Um, I imagine that there are a lot of physicians or um, clinical people in the audience, so when we talk about systems as it relates to human anatomy and physiology, it's not really a stretch to understand what it is. But what is a system, right? A system is a regularly interacting um, and interdependent group of items that come together to form a unified whole. And this is what we need to be, you know, healthcare sector is, is no different from this, from the 
people who are accessing care, the people who are providing the care, the people who are paying for the care from the insurance side, and the organizations that drive all that healthcare provision, the manufacturers, the distributors, et cetera. Like, it's all part of an ecosystem. And when we are thinking about the problems, we need to be thinking about it in this way and not in this uh, uh, siloed way of thinking. Um, so what we uh, were doing, what we did at Purple Source in my organization was to try to think about the enablers um, that can create a, a scalable and sustainable system in healthcare. So we looked at technology, as Claire has mentioned, and we looked at how advances in technology have helped other industries scale through some of their challenges. We can do the same thing for healthcare. Technology can help us scale um, some of the challenges that we have around infrastructure. It can help us address some of the issues that we have around human resources. Um, and it can also help us address some of the issues that we have around some of the inefficient processes that exist today. Claire talked about going paperless, et cetera. Um, we also realized that in order to maintain the system, you need to be able to manage your risk. And if you're talking about a system, you need to be able to do that in such a way that it does not depend on any one person. Otherwise, it is doomed to fail. Um, we uh, have, I think a lot of people have talked about uh, sort of competent leadership and management. And I think the crux of the matter is that we realize that we need to put the right people in charge. Not all doctors make good managers. Not all doctors can run a business. And I think we all need to kind of just be okay with that and find the right people that we can put in place. And that's, <laughs> and that's, uh, that's kind of what we do um, um, at Purple Source. And we also need to be able to hold the people that we put in those positions accountable for the tasks that we have set them. And that also includes the people who are, who are setting the tasks. You know, and, I, and I see that sort of mirrored, even in the, especially in the public sector, to be honest. Um, we've talked a lot about quality of care. Um, healthcare is a service. I know I've made some analogy to banking, so in some way uh, it is. We need an agreed upon set of quality standards that are regulated. Uh, I think Prof was talking a lot about regulation that are regulated and enforced and can be replicated. I think that's even more important. Can be replicated anywhere um, across the country. Um, you, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, you know exactly what it is that you get when you go to the bank branch. And that doesn't matter if you're male, if you're female, if you're poor, if you're rich. And this is what we need in the healthcare system. And that's how we, we've been approaching um, some of these issues. Um, we also understand the need to develop the people that we have on the ground now. If we have, uh, if we have to have any chance of creating a system that will outlast us. Um, I had the privilege of meeting um, uh, doc, the late Dr. Awojobi of Erua uh, about five years ago. And he said to me that um, Nigerians are capable of solving their problems with little or no external help. And he really embodied this ethos. Um, he saw 600 new patients a month in Erua in his clinic, which had 56 beds, in probably one of the most rural areas that I've ever been to. And this was with himself, his wife, two nurses, community health workers, and the rest of his staff were secondary school graduates that he had trained to fill in those gaps. And I think that this is a model that we need to learn from. I think we, we are. The National Health uh, Act makes provisions for training of new cadres of healthcare workers, and we need to be able to apply it uh, to the healthcare system. Um, the system needs money. I don't want to harp on too much about money because money is just an enabler um, and it's not the solution to all problems. I'll give you an example. So when we recently took over a group of ailing facilities in Lagos and I think the expectation by the staff was that these young boys in shiny suits and speaking funny English were going to come with suitcases of money and solve everything that was going on. You know, this is an organization that's been around for 30 years and ailing for more than five. And without putting a dime into this business and putting some simple controls in place and prioritizing spending, etc., we were able to pay people's salaries on time for the first time in three years in an organization that had almost 100 staff and had been making losses for about three or four years, right? So I think money is important, but I'd like not to focus too much uh, on, on money. Um, and finally, uh, I think we realize that uh, the importance of collaboration in anything that we do, right? Um, there's a 
quotes by uh, Robert Browning that says that um, a man's reach should exceed his grasp, otherwise what is heaven for? Um, but I think what he failed to actually say is that that man must work with others. Otherwise, his dreams would be limited by his capacity and his experience. Um, so that's something that we take to heart, and the way that we work is in partnership and collaboration with people that know what they're doing. That's, that's, that's the way that we think that we can move forward. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So our particular vision uh, at Purple Source is we're hoping that we can drive change not just in Nigeria, but really on the continent. Like We want to be able to demonstrate um, a, a model of thinking around systems, right? A systems-based approach to healthcare that can create better outcomes on a massive scale for people. Um, as a first step, as I mentioned, we're basically creating a network. We want to be able to demonstrate some practical and tangible options for growth in the healthcare sector. And the hope is that this is the kind of thing that will stimulate investment in sort of early growth businesses that are taking a systems-based approach to how we can solve the issues uh, of healthcare. Um, we want to also create a paradigm where your profits correlate with the impact that you make. Um, I see that there are a lot of people in this room who are passionate about healthcare, and I'm sure that they are engaged in trying to solve the problems uh, of Nigeria, Nigerian's healthcare system in some way or the other. So I, I would like to encourage um, everyone to kind of use this platform today to, to seek each other out, find ways that you can collaborate to build systems um, I think that's really the most important thing, to build systems that can take you further together. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.